Hey guys, so Michael Bay has a habit of overusing CGI explosions, tacky hero shots, but his formula does work in some respect. Now his movies don't normally go on to become critical hits, but some have become beloved classics and monumental financial successes. So with his latest directorial endeavor, 13 Hours, hitting theaters on January 15th, we thought this would be the perfect time to rank all of the movies he directed. So here you have it, Michael Bay's movies ranked as voted on by the team at Collider. We're kicking things off with a tie between Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, and Transformers Age of Extinction. Revenge of the Fallen took a deep dive in the critical department, even if it out-earned the first film. This sequel brings a strange interpretation of the Constructicons to life in order to resurrect Megatron, who acts on behalf of an ancient being known as the Fallen. The Big Bad isn't the only one to come back from the dead since Optimus Prime is killed by Megatron and then rebuilt with parts of the sacrificed Autobot Jetfire, granting Optimus new powers that he uses to win the day. Along the way, there are Transformers who are racist characters, and the characters discover that the Air and Space Museum exits into a desert. The most recent of Michael Bay's Transformers films have brought the beloved Dinobots to the big screen, but Age of Extinction did little to win over critics. The film is a departure from the previous trilogy in that it discards Shia LaBeouf's character completely in favor of focusing on Mark Wahlberg and his character's daughter, played by Nicola Peltz. The Autobots are being hunted down by the government and Cybertronian bounty hunters alike, paired with an evil corporation hellbent on creating its own version of Transformers, a plan which ends terribly. Though Optimus Prime and his new Dino Pals eventually come out on top, the movie ends up with the Autobots leaving the Earth in search of the creators, which is where Bay will presumably pick up in 2017. I think we just found a Transformer. After stumbling with the 2009 follow-up to his first Transformers film, Bay's third Autobot adventure rebounded slightly, even though he infamously swapped Megan Fox for newcomer Rosie Huntington Whiteley. The film is notable for featuring Sentinel Prime, the metal-rending deaths of quite a few Autobots and Decepticons, and for the outright destruction of Chicago in the name of rebuilding Cybertron. Taking in over $1.1 billion at the worldwide box office, it was all but guaranteed that another film would be on the way in no time. Pearl Harbor feels like Michael Bay watched Titanic and thought, I can do that, but Michael Bay cannot do that. The weight of that history is beyond Bay's grasp, and his attempt to forge a meaningful love triangle between Josh Hartnett, Ben Affleck, and Kate Beckinsale was laughable. Unsurprisingly, the actual attack on Pearl Harbor is a tremendous set piece, but the film becomes even more tedious by tacking on a third act where the U.S. gets revenge during their bombing run on Tokyo. You can chalk the island up to a noble failure, during which audiences finally learn that Bay simply couldn't do subtlety even if he tried. What should have been a restrained, thoughtful sci-fi film is instead cranked up to 11 and every note is played for maximum boom. The premise behind the film, an island of clones is being used for the purpose of organ donation, was used to much better effect in the 2010 film Never Let Me Go. Although, to be fair, that film has substantially fewer shootouts and chase sequences. We've got another tie for the sixth position, Transformers and Pain and Gain. The first of Bay's Transformers movies, and easily the best, the 2007 film made Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox household names. It also brought the fan-favorite Hasbro heroes and villains to life on the big screen for the first time in live action, alongside some of the hottest cars ever to hit the streets. It grossed almost $710 million at the global box office, earned three Oscar nominations, and paved the way for the rest of the billion-dollar Transformers franchise that's still rolling out today. Pain and Gain is without a doubt Michael Bay's funniest movie. Dwayne Johnson teams with Mark Wahlberg and Anthony Mackie to play real life Florida criminals who steal millions and murder in hopes of escaping their depressing lives. What's great about this film is that Bay allows his more cynical sensibilities and his dark sense of humor to push to the forefront of the story rather than doling it out piecemeal in between or amidst extended action sequences. While the original Bad Boys was a relatively straightforward buddy cop movie, its notorious sequel is a wildly exuberant, nonsensical mess in the best possible way. There are so many wrong decisions going on here, from the romance between Will Smith and Gabrielle Union to Michael Shannon's cameo as a white supremacist to the whole final act in Cuba, and that's not even getting into the film's more politically incorrect corners. If there were ever a textbook definition of a car crash movie, this would be it. Packing in enough insane action sequences, bleak humor, and inexplicable plot turns in its extended runtime that the whole thing becomes borderline dazzling. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when we come for you? Bay's first feature film includes all of his trademarks, slow motion, wisecracking characters, and explosions galore, but it feels positively quaint when compared to the scale of his future work. However, that doesn't take away from its charm and shows that even without a huge CGI toolbox, Bay can still provide plenty of thrill
thrills, especially when he has the right lead actors aboard. This is when Bay left orbit in more ways than one. The film is campy beyond all reason, and yet that's part of its appeal. While 1998's other giant asteroid movie, Deep Impact, actually tried to inject pathos and humanity into the story, Armageddon is about pillow talk with animal crackers, blowing up the International Space Station, jumping canyons like you're in an extraterrestrial General Lee, space madness from Steve Buscemi, and so much more. It's a movie with no love for science, but science can take a backseat when your movie is as bonkers as Armageddon. Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane. Not only was The Rock our number one pick, but it was unanimous. Coming off of Bad Boys, Babe was still just grounded enough to make a film that didn't spin off into sheer lunacy, and it features characters you genuinely care about, rather than talking plot points that carry audiences to the next explosion. Not only are Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, and Ed Harris all terrific in the lead roles, but the movie is packed with plenty of fun supporting performances and some very quotable dialogue. Throw in top-notch action and his signature flourishes, and the movie is unmistakably Bay. but this isn't just a great action film compared to his other their work. It's a great action film, period. Thank you so much for watching. Tell us how Michael Bay's movies stack up for you in the comments section below. And if you dug this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up with everything we've got going down here on Collider.